All right, here we go. So uh, this is from questions from um, May the 15th on the nature of a covenant. And I had several questions about that. The first question is this. Uh, the person says Exodus 15. I think they mean Genesis 15 where Abraham cuts the animals in half down the middle and lays them opposite each other. So from the text itself, the question was, where's the trench in that text? Uh, first of all, the trench comes from our knowledge of ancient tradition. This is how they did this. They would cut the animal in two, they'd cut a trench, cut the animal in two and half, and lay it opposite itself, the, each half on each side, and then walk through the trench. So uh, also at the end of uh, Genesis 15, it says the torch passed through the trench. So uh, the, it's in the text at the end of the chapter, but it's also implied by the laying the animals opposite each other. And so it'd be hard to uh, lay them opposite each other if they're laying flat. They're laying opposite each other, meaning they're, in a, they're on an incline downward. So uh, and that way the blood ran into the trench. And at the end, it says the torch passed through the trench. So uh, the, there's the, the, that language. But in addition to that, we just know ancient custom was to, to either dig a trench or to f find a place that had a natural trench to it, and that's where you cut the animals in half and lay them opposite each other, each on each half, and allow the blood to run into that particular trench. And this was a tradition at that time, and you would walk through there, and it would get blood on the hem of your uh, garment, and it would mark that decision as cut with a covenant. And so that was the, the external sign that you had agreed to uh, the condition or terms of, the, uh, of whatever the situation was, marriage, land, with this other party. Secondly is how were Jewish women marked for the covenant? The answer is they weren't, uh, very simply. It's, it was a covenant with Abraham and his seed. The primary issue here is offspring through Abraham. Uh, not through Sarah. And so it was Abraham and Sarah, but the primary issue emphasis here is on uh, Abraham. Uh, now, there are other aspects in which Jewish women did participate but uh, in covenantal life of the nation of Israel in terms of sacrifices, in terms of uh, uh, you know Passover and all those kinds of things. But when it came to this particular rite, it was limited to, to men. Uh, also on this, uh, the person's asking about the difference between Old Testament, New Testament co covenant with infants for circumcision, what about baby dedications and bab infant baptisms today? The answer is, yeah, sure, our church does baby dedications, and it's not too different than when, but, but, but on that, we don't follow the Old Testament circumcision rule there, because when we do baby dedications, we're not marking them as having entered the covenant community the way circumcision marked Old Testament Jewish boys. Baptism is the mark of entrance into the covenant community. Baby dedications, uh, we follow the pattern because Jesus himself was taken to the temple and dedicated by his mother to the Lord. And so there's kind of a pattern there of that. Uh, now, infant baptism, the problem is infant baptism in many cases is intended to mark as entrance into the covenant community, whereas the New Testament doesn't have a single example of infant baptism and water baptism after conversion as a mark of entrance into the covenant community of the church is the standard of the New Testament. All kinds of examples of this from the uh, Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, uh, Romans chapter 6. Do you not know that when you are baptized into Christ Jesus, you are baptized into his death and raised up with his resurrection? That's really hard to imagine that with reference to an infant in light of the context of Romans chapter 6. We're talking about believers and their sanctifying work of God in the life of a believer. So uh, in, the, in the New Testament, the mark of covenant entrance into the community of faith is baptism. In the Old Testament, the mark of entrance into the covenant community of faith was uh, circumcision. And so there, there is a difference between the two, and uh, I would not equate infant baptism at, say, a Presbyterian, Lutheran, or Roman Catholic church, which doesn't just have some kind of dedication type meaning to it, but actually means entrance into the covenant community as being very different than our view of baptism, because we don't think an eight-day-old has the moral uh, ability, the volitional ability to choose to believe in Christ Jesus and therefore need to be baptized as a mark of having entered that community of faith. And so there is a difference between the two. Now that being said, if someone's baptized as an infant out of the desire of the heart of the parents to set them aside for the work of God, I totally understand that. But when they later become believers from the standards of the New Testament, they should be baptized as a mark of entrance into the family. Uh, of God, the church family. And so there's a difference. And baby dedications are not uh, the same as what circumcision meant. So uh, anyway, those are good questions about uh, the covenant language from uh, May the 15th. Uh, we'll hope to see you guys this Sunday. God bless you.